we will look at how the continents were formed, what caused them to be distributed on the face of the globe, what killed the dinosaurs. We will look at why the moon faces the Earth, what caused the spin of the Earth and the moon in their in orbit, stone. why we have weather patterns circulating because in opposite directions, northern and southern hemispheres, why clouds rotate in the way they do. What are the main sources of mountain building? And what are the main causes of earthquakes now? This is produced as part of the ongoing work on the website, the way, the truth, and the life.net. The image to the left is the earth facing the sun, showing Pangaea. The image to the right is an enlargement of Pangaea showing the location of major dinosaur fossil finds. This uh, indicates the ring of life, that point where during the uh, evolution of life uh, there was a zone for this to take place where the temperature was not too hot and not too cold and they had a constant uh, moisture circulation. Venus always shows the same face to the Sun. This is a view of the Earth in orbit around the Sun and a small picture of the continents being formed as the same face of the Earth always faced the Sun before the breakup of what we'll call Pangaea here. Idea of plate tectonics is uh, uh, a nice idea, but it's false. Yes, there's an underbelly that is different than the continents. The continents were formed by facing the sun and having a ring of life. In this ring of life, uh, the, where <coughs> the dinosaurs grew up. In the center it was too hot and the backside of the earth was freezing cold but there was a ring of life where the temperature was just right and at that time the clouds uh, the heat from the center rose and come out and condensed and so there was a, a simple weather pattern of uh, uh, central heating uh, rising and outer cooling and, uh, water for the vegetation and life to develop. Now there are many theories as to what happened to the dinosaurs and the volcanoes and comets and uh, asteroids, many different theories. But let's look at the truth of the matter. Yes, there were many collisions. This is a picture of the moon and the idea that there were many collisions and certainly the earth was not spared this. There's much debris floating in. But in an earlier time this shows an orbit of the moon similar to that of the earth. This is showing an annual approach and then finally a collision. Lagrange showed that there were points of relatively stable orbits of the, both the Earth and another planet around the Sun in the same orbit. This is where the Moon was in one of these Lagrangian points. The image to the left is the Earth facing the Sun showing Pangaea. The image to the right is an enlargement of Pangaea showing the location of major dinosaur fossil finds. This uh, indicates the ring of life, that point where during the uh, evolution of life uh, there was a zone for this to take place where the temperature was not too hot and not too cold and they had a constant uh, moisture circulation in a simple central heating pattern. Then the moon struck the earth nearly from behind and that
caused the uh, continents to break up suddenly, killing the heavier dinosaurs with such a violent motion that they were thrown violently and killed. Only the lighter animals and birds survived such trauma. And that set the moon and earth spinning. We can check, does the spin fit? If this is the way the moon collided with the earth, then they have to spin in a certain way. Does the spin fit is the, the lunar question. The lunar splash surprised everyone, including NASA scientists. They expected to find just teaspoons of water. Instead, we found maybe about a dozen of these two-gallon buckets worth of water. And lift off of In October, NASA rocket. sent a spacecraft hurtling into a crater near the moon's south pole. Special cameras recorded the mile-high plume of debris. And just this week, researchers found the chemical markers that indicate frozen water. If there is significant amounts of water, it could be broken down into elements for rocket fuel or even provide drinking water for astronauts, paving the way for a possible lunar base. But that's still well beyond the horizon. Still, it's a giant leap from a supposedly dusty, dry moon Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin visited 40 years ago. A moon that we may now all look at just a little differently. Daniel Seberg, CBS News, New York. No, it's clear the moon picked up water from its collision with the Earth. And if we look at the spreading out of the continents, there's very clear evidence for this event being some 65 million years ago. This is the layer of sediment all over the surface of the continents showing that boundary caused by all of the debris of the moon striking the earth from behind in what would now be the area of the Pacific Ocean. Also, the way the continents catch the tide tends to accelerate the moon in its orbit, that is, in its angular rotation around the Earth. So the distance of the moon from the Earth has been gradually increasing. Unfortunately, on the university level, we have a bunch of people that study books rather than growing up in a strong experience of physical reality and mechanical reality, especially in rotation. Rotation is very deceptive. Men working on rotational equipment often have serious accidents because the energy of rotation is not obvious. Here's showing the north and south hemispheres and the Coriolis effect causing opposite rotations. The same effect uh, causes the cloud formations on the major scale and contributes to the way that water spins as it goes down the drain. And here we're showing a vector model of what's causing most of the earthquakes today. This Coriolis force pulls towards the equator. This is what has built the Himalayas and the mountains of Europe and uh, southern Russia. The pushing down of the uh, northern continents and the uh, pushing up of the southern continents towards the equator. This is the work of the Coriolis force. What we call the Coriolis force is the result of two individual forces. That of gravity, where everything is pushed towards the center of the Earth, and that of what we call centrifugal force. The Earth spinning on its axis, everything is being 
uh, experiencing a force away from the axis of the Earth in order to pull it into orbit around the Earth's axis. The combination of the two forces is called Coriolis force. It causes everything to be pulled towards the center and the equator. The continents were formed by facing the sun and having a ring of life. When you study the timeline of the Earth and the origins of life, you begin to understand the dangers and hazards to destroying a life-evolving environment. It truly violates the time and chance uh, that life exists on Earth. And the most important thing we can do is take this intelligence in God's body and spread it through the universe, starting with space stations and developing the technology to be able to move to other planets and other solar systems to escape this one before it's destroyed by the natural laws of physics. Now, one basic thing here, I'm living in Buffalo, and they talk about 75% of the Black boys don't graduate from high school and 25% of the white boys, as if it's a racial issue. If you look, it's not a racial issue, it's a home issue. Boys that don't have a father, if you look at whether black or white, it's the boys that don't have a father that tend to not uh, finish high school, not develop their intellectual talents, not develop their mechanical or ability to uh, take and hold a, a good job and, and uh, make a farm or make a garden or build a pig pen. And it's a shame. The most important thing we can offer is like what the Chinese developed in, a family farming environment for millions of years where they learned respect for their elders. And when, to learn what Jesus talked about, love. To have that love, first of all, a child needs a nursing bond with a mother that stays and makes a home for her and a father that protects them. And the uh, most terrible thing I've learned is how evil things have gotten. Islam uh, killed, murdering them, uh, over 150 million uh, in 15, like 1,500 years. Communism did it in 100 years. Women's liberation does it in three years. Not only are they killing the unborn, murdering them, they're also destroying the homes that we'll raise. They don't have any choice. Women were, by and large, uh, especially those around the equator, were brought up in a violent uh, tribal conflict where women were taken by force and raped. And uh, they have a, a history. If you look, there's a better genetic background in the, in the Chinese living in their family farms for hundreds of thousands of years and, and having a peaceful environment. Uh, let's start working together and find out what Christ meant about love. First of all, giving that nursing mammalian bond of a mother that is with her children and makes a home and a father that provides and protects a home and food and the, the family can have a garden and not be so dependent and have brothers and sisters and siblings. One of the greatest things we could do in the cities is to build the homes around a courtyard where the children could play safely inside and play, have a basketball and soccer field and the things necessary to enjoy merry-go-rounds and swings and so forth and learn about physical reality. Try to build a society that's peaceful and builds to extending intelligence out through God's body. Remember, in Him we live and move and have our being. Thank you.